There are some substances that can affect the normal process of oxidative phosphorylation. They are divided according to their mechanism of action on three groups. The first group is electron transport inhibitors. The first one is rotenone and barbiturates. They inhibit complex 1. Complex 1 is unable to transfer electrons to Kenzem Q, thereby other complexes will not receive energy for hydrogen proton transportation, thereby there will be no hydrogen proton concentration gradient and no ATP production. Also with block, electrons leak out from electron transport chain with formation of superoxide that results in mitochondrial damage. You can mention that FADH that delivers electrons to Kenzem Q in this case will work as usual. But the problem is that NADH is by far the most popular electron carrier that is used in most of reactions and thereby delivers most of electrons. And FADH simply cannot compensate loss of NADH delivery. Antimycin A inhibits complex 3 basically in the same fashion. You can remember this as anti 3 mycin. But the most high yield to know is that cyanide and carbon monoxide are inhibitors of complex 4. To explain this, recall that cyanide loves ferric iron, which is iron in plus 3 state. And love is underestimation, it literally obsessed with it. Once cyanide meets ferric iron, it binds to it and never let it go. You know, it's like Professor Snape from Harry Potter. After all this time, always. And once cyanide binds to ferric iron, in this binded form it becomes completely useless. It cannot accept any electrons, thereby electron transportation becomes impossible. So how to treat cyanide poisoning? The first option is to give amyl nitrate. It's a strong oxidant that oxidizes iron with plus 2 charge in normal hemoglobin to plus 3 charge and now this substance called mid hemoglobin. And the concept here is that cyanide does not care what substance has ferric iron, it just loves iron with plus 3 charge. And now cyanide will bind to ferric iron in mid hemoglobin in the blood instead of ferric iron in complex 4. The second option is thiosulfate. Thiosulfate converts cyanide to thiocyanide, thereby preventing binding of cyanide to ferric iron. And the third option is vitamin B12. The concept here is that vitamin B12 has cobalt that loves cyanide. So cobalt binds to cyanide, thereby preventing binding of cyanide to ferric iron in complex 4. So we see that there is no possibility to disrupt this binding of cyanide to ferric iron, only to prevent it. So it's definitely love forever. Practically the same story for carbon monoxide, but carbon monoxide loves ferrous iron, which is iron in plus 2 state. Once carbon monoxide binds to ferrous iron in complex 4, electron transportation becomes impossible. But carbon monoxide loves ferrous iron, but not obsessed with it. And tricky humans at some point invented such thing as hyperbaric oxygenation. You know, just to save some of their kind. The concept here is that hyperbaric oxygenation is a pure 100% oxygen, and such massive amount of oxygen can displace carbon monoxide from iron, so the treatment of carbon monoxide poisoning is hyperbaric oxygenation. Another group called ATP synthase inhibitors, and the most high yield to know here is oligomycin. Oligomycin blocks ATP synthase, so hydrogen protons cannot cross through it, thereby there is no energy generation and thereby no ATP production. And the third group is uncoupling agents. The first one is denitrophenol that is used for weight loss. Denitrophenol is a protonophore. Protonophore is a substance that can freely diffuse across the lipid bilayer including inner mitochondrial membrane. Basically it can squeeze through it. But what makes denitrophenol so special is his love for hydrogen protons. This substance pick up protons in intramembrane space and along with hydrogen protons it diffuse through inner mitochondrial membrane, thereby delivering hydrogen protons to mitochondrial matrix. So it decreases hydrogen proton concentration in intramembrane space and increase hydrogen proton concentration in intracellular matrix. So hydrogen proton concentration gradient decreases. But very important that electrons are still flowing and electron complexes continue to suck energy out of electrons. And in this process they generate heat and pump hydrogen protons. Obviously this hydrogen proton transportation is wasted by denitrophenol because all the hydrogen protons they pump are returned back by denitrophenol, but heat is generated constantly. So in this case electron transportation occurs with heat generation but without ADP phosphorylation. So with denitrophenol these processes are not coupled with each other, that's why such agents called uncoupling agents. 
Also electrons that are used by electron transport chain have to be utilized, so low energy electrons bind to oxygen with water formation. Because hydrogen proton concentration gradient decrease, ADP phosphorylation decrease, so the amount of ADP molecules increase, and the main stimulus of oxidative phosphorylation is increase in ADP molecules. So to increase energy production, electron transport chain increase the rate of electrons transportation. ATP production will be still insufficient due to denitrophenol action, but heat generation will markedly increase. Because the faster electron transport chain is working, the more electrons are consumed, the more heat is generated, so this will cause hypothermia. But also, the faster electron transport chain is working, the more electrons have to be utilized, and to utilize electrons, mitochondria needs oxygen. So with increasing electron transport chain activity, organism has to provide more oxygen, and the only way to do this is to increase the breathing rate, thereby this will cause hyperventilation. And these two effects in their mechanisms are the same for all uncoupling agents. The only difference is how hydrogen proton gradient is dissipated. For example, aspirin induced mitochondrial permeability transition that increase permeability of the inner mitochondrial membrane for hydrogen protons, and from this point pathogenesis is exactly the same. In brown fat tissue, physiologically mitochondria has a specific protein carrier called thermogenin that can transport hydrogen protons into mitochondrial matrix. So this one specific protein that called thermogenin provides totally physiological uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation that provides enormous heat generating capacity of the brown fat tissue.